Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as Periodic Table. Periodic Table is basically a table of showcasing all the elements that are discovered up till now. So up till now, there are 118 elements that are discovered so far. Now this table does not only showcase the elements, rather they tell us a lot of different things just by looking at this table. The first thing is that all the elements that are present in this table are in the ascending order, starting from the lightest element, that is the hydrogen, present on the top left corner of this table. And this table ends with the heaviest element, called as organism, with the atomic number of 118, and it is represented by capital O and small g. And it is present at the bottom right corner of this table. If we look at one element closely, we can see three different things on it. That includes the tiny number present on the top called its atomic number. Atomic number means the number of protons present in that element. The second thing is the symbol of that element. So this is hydrogen and hydrogen is represented by capital H. And the numbers at the bottom are basically the atomic masses of that element. Atomic mass means the number of protons plus number of neutrons present in that element. Now, this table has seven different types of rows. So this is row 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. The two rows that are present at the bottom are basically the elements that are present in row 6 and row 7. As you can see by the color, they should come after lanthanide and actinide. So the series of elements that should be coming after lanthanide is called as lanthanide series. And the series of elements that are going to come after actinide are basically called as actinide series. Now these horizontal rows are basically called as the periods of this periodic table. If we put this lanthanide series and actinide series inside the table, it will look like this. Now this is a lot simpler by recognizing all the elements present in that seven rows. And we can see how many elements are present in each row. So the first period contains two elements. The second will contain 8, the third will contain 8, the fourth will contain 18, the fifth will contain 18, and the last two will have 32 elements in them. Now these horizontal rows or periods are going to tell us something, and that is, the number of period means the number of shells present in that element. So if an element is present in period 1, they will have only one shell. If they will be present in period 2, they will have two shells, in three, we'll have three shells, and so on and so forth. Let's take a few examples. So hydrogen belongs to period one. That's why they have only one shell. Carbon is present in period two, so it will have two shells. If we take sodium, sodium is present in period three, so it will have three shells. And if we take this americum, that is the element present in actinide series, it means they are present in period seven, so they will have seven different type of shells in it. Okay, if we look at this table vertically, we can see that we have a lot of different type of columns here. So this is column one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. So we have eighteen different type of columns here. And these columns are called as groups. Group means that all the elements present in that specific group will have same number of electrons in their valence shell. For example, we can see three different type of elements here. So we have lithium, sodium, and potassium. All these elements are present in group 1. So as you can see, lithium, sodium, and potassium, they all have one electron in their outermost shell, due to which their chemical properties are quite similar to each other. Some groups are also have specific names. For example, group 1, besides hydrogen, is called as alkali metals. Group 2 are called as alkaline earth metal. Group 17 is called as halogens, and group 18s are called as noble gases. 
If you remember the subshells and shells from the previous video, this periodic table will also allow us to find all the elements present in those subshells. So as you can see, the group 1 and group 2 belongs to S block elements. From group 3 to group 12, these elements are present in D block elements. From group 13 to 18, these elements are present in P subshell. And lanthanide series and actinide series are present in F subshell. So this table is also telling us the type of subshells present in these elements. There is another unique way to get more information from these groups. And that is that if we ignore the transition elements present in this periodic table and start numbering the group numbers, then this will be group 1, this will be group 2, group 3, group 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now the group numbers have changed. The new numbers that belong to this group also representing the number of electrons present in their valence shell. Let's take this group, which was group 16 before, but now it's changed to group 6. Let's see how these elements are present. So these are the structures of all the elements present in this group 6. And as you can see, in all these elements, the valence shell have 6 number of electrons in them. And if you memorize the thing like this, it will help you a lot to understand the reactivity of all these elements. Now in this periodic table, all these elements need to get stabilized. And the most stable group here is the group 8, that is the noble gases. So all the other elements present in other groups envy these noble gases and try to be like them. Let's take the first two groups with noble gases and see how they are going to react. So hydrogen is going to mimic helium because they both are present in period 1 and lithium will mimic helium or neon depending on the situation. Now for hydrogen, in order to stabilize its first shell, it can lose or gain one electron. So that's why the properties of hydrogen is different from all the other elements and the color of this hydrogen is also changed telling us that the properties of hydrogen doesn't match with all the properties that are present at the bottom. Now for lithium, in order to stabilize its second shell, it can either lose one electron or gain seven electrons. To mimic neon, lithium needs to add seven electrons and that will be quite hard for it. So instead of getting seven electrons, it will lose one electron and will try to mimic helium. And that's why all the elements present in group one and group two lose their one or two electrons from their valence shell and become a positive ion. And that's why these two groups are called as alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. Just remember, Metals are the only elements that will prefer to lose electron and will convert into the positive ion. Now the charges that appears on each group are here. So all these elements belong to group 1 will lose one electron from the valence shell and will get the charge positive 1. For group 2 elements they will lose 2 electron and will gain plus 2 charge. For group 3 they will become plus 3 and for group 4 they have either plus 4 charge or minus 4 charge depending on the situation they are having. And if we move on, now nitrogen belongs to group 5, so they have 5 electrons in their valence shell. So losing 5 electrons is harder for it, rather gaining 3 electrons. So they will have minus 3 charge here, then minus 2, then minus 1 and will become a negative ion. That's why the elements present in group 5, 6 and 7 are mostly non-metals. Noble gases are all stable so they will not lose or gain electron that's why they are not getting any charge here. So all these negative and positive charge that will appear on these elements are called as valency. So if we look at the periodic table we can see that across the period the valency of elements start increasing from plus 1, 2, 3, 4 and then they start decreasing like minus 3, minus 2 and minus 1. If we are going down the group we can see that all the elements present in that specific group will have same type of charge. So the valency will not change down the group. Now first two elements as they are going to lose electron they will be metals. And that's why we are going to talk about metallic character. The question is, inside one group, which element is more reactive than the other? Now let's say 
If we are going to compare sodium with potassium, which element is more reactive? And that's a confusing question as well. Let's try to see the atomic structure of this group. So we will have lithium, sodium, potassium, and rhabdium there. While going down the group, we can see that the number of shells are also increasing in each element. And the distance of the valence electron from the nucleus is getting bigger and bigger. So the bigger atom is, they will have more shells and the attraction of nucleus protons for the valence electron will become less and less. So rhabdium will lose electron more easily than potassium. Potassium will lose electron more easily than sodium and sodium will lose electron more easily than lithium. So down the group, the reactivity of element is increasing. So the answer of that question is, potassium is more reactive than sodium. If we look across the period, which element is more reactive, sodium or magnesium? So let's draw the atoms of all these elements present in group 2. Now if we're going across the period, we can see that the number of shells remains the same. But the number of protons present in lithium is 3 and in beryllium is 4. The number of protons present in sodium are 11 and magnesium are 12. So more proton means more power to attract the valence electron. So magnesium will find it harder to lose two electrons than sodium. So across the period, the reactivity of element decreases. So the answer of this question is sodium is more reactive than magnesium. Let's talk about the non-metallic character of the other elements. Again, we are going to pick two different type of groups here. So I'll take group 4 and group 6. Let's draw the atoms of group 4 and group 6. Now let's say non-metallic character comes up when an element or atom is going to gain electron or find it harder to lose electron. Now let's say if we are going down the group, the number of shells are going to increase and the force of attraction between the protons and the valence electrons will be less. So this element 10 will prefer to lose these four electrons instead of gaining or sharing those four electrons as compared to carbon. Carbon is a small atom, so it will prefer to share electrons with another atom rather losing them. So down the group, the non-metallic character decreases. If we are going across the period, we can see the number of protons are increasing. More proton means more power to attract the valence electron and they will find harder to lose the shell. So across the period, the non-metallic character increases. Now we can see the size of these elements here. So let's discuss the trend of size in periodic table. So in the periodic table, if we look at the atomic size down the group, the size of the atom is going to increase due to the number of shells present in each period. And across the period, the size of the atom is going to decrease due to the increased number of protons there. Let's talk about ions now. So as we know, metals will going to lose electron and will gain a positive charge. And non-metals will gain electrons and will have a negative charge. So let's see which atom have the bigger size. So in case of metals, as they are going to lose electron, the force of attraction between protons and their valence shell electrons will increase. So the size of lithium will be greater than the lithium ion. For non-metals, as they are going to gain electron, and electrons have negative charge on them. So in the same shell, electrons will repel each other and the size of the atom is going to increase. So in case of oxygen, the oxygen ion is bigger than the oxygen atom. Inside the periodic table, the trend of ion size is the same as the atomic size. So down the group, the size of the ions will increase due to the increased number of shells there. And across the period, the size of the atom is going to decrease, both in the positive ion case and the negative ion case. So the size is going to decrease gradually across the period. Let's talk about ionization energy. Ionization energy is basically the energy required to lose electron from an atom. 
So if an atom is a small atom, the force of attraction between protons and their valence shell electrons will increase. And if there is a bigger atom, the force of attraction between protons and the valence shell electron will decrease. So it will be a lot easier to remove electron with less energy from the bigger atom. So down the group, the ionization energy will decrease. And across the period, the ionization energy will increase. Now there are a few exceptions that can be recognized. So if we take this period two and try to draw the ionization energy chart here, it should be look like this, but that's a wrong chart. Rather, they will look like this. Now here we have two exceptions. The exceptions are created by boron and oxygen here. The reason behind these exception is here. So let's take oxygen first. In oxygen, we have six number of electrons in their valence shell. So this is two, four, five, and six. If we compare this oxygen with nitrogen, nitrogen will have five electrons in their valence shell. Two will be present in 2s orbital and three electrons will be present in 1,1p orbital. Now, if we have one electron in one orbital, they will provide this atom a special stability here as compared to oxygen. Now, in case of ionization energy, we need to lose one electron from each atom. So in case of nitrogen, if we remove this electron from p orbital, now the special stability this nitrogen atom was having is no more. So the ionization energy is increasing. As compared to oxygen, for oxygen, if we remove one electron, this oxygen will become more stable because now they will have one one electron in each orbital and gain that special stability that nitrogen was having. So that's why the oxygen is more stable and the ionization energy is less for oxygen as compared to nitrogen. Next is electron affinity. Electron affinity is the opposite of ionization energy. Now in this case, the atom is going to gain electron and the energy required to gain electron is called as electron affinity. Now if we go down the group, down the group, the electron affinity is decreasing because the bigger atom is, it is harder for that atom to gain electron. If we go across the period, the electron affinity will increase due to the increased number of protons there. Last but not least, electronegativity. Electronegativity is present when two atoms are going to share electron with each other. Now, for example, this body is the hydrogen and the tug of war is basically the electrons pulled by the other body and that is the oxygen. Now, the tug of war of these electrons between hydrogen and oxygen is basically called as electronegativity. Now, in this case, as oxygen is a bigger atom, have more protons in them, so it will attract electrons more easily than hydrogen. So they will have partial negative charge on them. Hydrogen is a small atom and have only one proton to attract these electrons. So they will have partial positive charge while sharing these electrons between the both atom. Inside the product table, if we go down the group, the electronegativity is going to get decreased. And if we are going across the period, they are going to increase themselves. Now, there is another way to look at this trend. For example, if we are going to change the direction down the group like this, and if we take this arrow across the period down here, like this, then we can only make one arrow across the period showing both trends inside this periodic table. So let's summarize all the things. The size of the atom and the metallic character is in one direction towards left side, while non-metallic character and all the bonds that we discuss, including electronegativity, electron affinity and ionization energy, they all have same direction towards right hand side. So by looking at this picture, you can easily memorize that what is the trend of each category in the periodic table. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel. 
थैंक यू बाय